Smallpox is thought to have originated with farm animals, especially cattle, but also horses and sheep, and then cross species to infect humans. Europeans had a great deal of contact with those animals, whereas the Inca and Aztec people had none. As Jared Diamond, the author of Guns, Germs, and Steel, explains, the Incas had llamas, but llamas aren't like European cows and sheep. They're not milked, they're not kept in large herds, and they don't live in barns and huts alongside humans. There was no significant exchange of germs between llamas and people. The devastation of smallpox in the Americas was not due to a vengeful god, but rather to the fact that American Indians did not spend as much quality time with their domesticated llamas as Europeans did with their cows. Now, maybe you were reading these tales of destruction and thinking, oh no, I myself do not have a cattle farm, or I am a proud llama farmer, there's got to be one somewhere, and are therefore convinced that you would surely die if you contracted smallpox because of your sad immune system. Considering what happened to the American Indians, an outbreak of smallpox is an extremely fight frightening prospect. Unfortunately, no, fortunately, the World Health Organization officially declared the disease eradicated worldwide in 1979. Accordingly, we are no longer even vaccinated to prevent it. This desirable state of affairs is largely thanks to Edward Jenner. In the 18th century, the English doctor and scientist realized that milkmaids who had suffered from cowpox, a disease which results in only a few small sores on the hands, never contracted smallpox. He began injecting people who were not milkmaids with a small amount of pus from cowpox blisters in an attempt to ensure that they too would never suffer smallpox. As far back as ancient Roman times, it was understood that people who had survived smallpox once did not get the disease again. Having already read about the kind of cures attempted for the bubonic plague, you can guess that this basic knowledge of immunity didn't stop people in Europe from developing some alternative theories about how to treat the disease. In the 17th century, Dr. Thomas Sydenham recommended 12 bottles of beer every 24 hours, which I suppose at least temporarily distracted the patients from their disfiguring pox and made them feel confident about their ability to heal. While Europeans were guzzling beer, a technique known as variolation became popular in the Ottoman Empire. Variolation generally entailed finding someone suffering from smallpox, drawing blood or fluid from one of their pustules and injecting it into an uninfected person. Other methods of transfer might include rubbing infected bits of scab on open wounds or snorting smallpox crusts up your nose. The uninfected person would usually develop the disease, but in a less severe form than if they had contracted it naturally. They would get a little bit sick rather than a lot sick and hopefully recover with minimal damage. By the end of the 18th century, variolation had become common throughout the world. King Frederick II of Prussia had all of his soldiers treated, as did George Washington at Valley Forge in 1778. People in France were more resistant to the procedure, causing the philosopher Voltaire to fume. Had variolation been practiced in France, it would have saved the lives of thousands. Edward Jenner, genius and hero, was himself variolated against smallpox as a child in the traditional way. But he was intrigued by a dairymaid he heard declare, I shall never have smallpox, for I've had cowpox. I shall never have an ugly pockmarked face. In 1796, Jenner found a milkmaid with cowpox and injected the matter from one of her sores into an eight-year-old boy who developed a mild fever and loss of appetite, but recovered quite quickly. Ten days later, Jenner proceeded to inject the boy with actual smallpox. The boy survived with no signs of smallpox. That experiment sounds terrifying, but it worked. Jenner called the technique vaccination, as vaca was the Latin word for cow. Not cool. Okay, there we go. Vaccination is one of the best things that has happened to civilization. Empires toppled like sandcastles in the wake of diseases we do not give a second thought to today. All right, that finishes us up on smallpox, and next time we will start on tuberculosis. Uh, one of the most interesting parts of the whole smallpox thing to me, though, was like snorting people's scabs who had smallpox to protect yourself against it. And as gross as that is, it worked. Don't do that, though. We don't need to do that now. We don't need to do